So we're concentrating on the final of the Super Six, the super middleweight tournament between Britain's Carl Froch and the American Andre Ward. You can hear full commentary of the fight on Five Live from around about 2.30 on Sunday morning. And if you're not going to stay up, then it will be rerun on Sports Extra at 8, 9 and 10 in the morning. We'd like your thoughts on the fight as well. You can text us on 85058 or you can tweet us at BBC Five Live. Steve Bunce is here with me in the studio. How are you? Fantastic, Ellie. And I'm wishing I was um, where you're about to go now. I'm getting starting to get really envious. Yeah. In Atlantic City is our boxing commentator, Mike Costello, and former light welterweight world champion, Paulie Malinaggi. Hi, guys. Evening, Ellie. Would you rather be... In Atlantic City or in Salford Keys, be honest. <laughs> I, think, I think we'd rather be here. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no need for that, really. No, really, there isn't. There? Let's not Sorry. rub it in. Um, but, but, you know, we, love, we love being here, Bunsen. Yes, we got, do. Right, we do. We do. Um, tell us, first of all, Steve, are these the two best fighters in this competition? Yeah, I really think they are the two best fighters in this competition. Back in about June of 2009, when this competition was put together, and there were some fabulous press conferences, one in Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen, one underneath or in the shadow of the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, and one in Madison Square Garden. That's not too bad, is it? Sadly, there wasn't one in the lace market in Nottingham, so I do feel a little bit it let down. For, there should have been. It's a fantastic place. And I think back then, people looked at these two when there were six good fighters in the tournament, and, and looked at it and thought, you know what? Those will be the two in the final and it's come true but it's taken a lot of fights and it's taken a lot of time yeah it has taken a lot of time Mike as Steve says but now you're there you're in Atlantic City after being in Washington last week I mean how do you compare the atmosphere between the two cities by the way well, this has been a very different type of build-up because uh, fights in Atlantic City are generally built up in New York the press conference this week was on Tuesday and both the fighters said what they had to say and then we moved across here and so I, I think it's it's similar in the sense that the momentum around the fight is growing across these last couple of days and the last of the set piece occasions we've got the weigh in here tomorrow this fight unlike last week's has been affected by circumstances it should have happened seven weeks ago on october the 29th also here in atlantic city but andre ward suffered a cut in training that will affect the attendance and the gate at the box office here. There's no doubt about that. For example, many British fans had bought packages to come over here to watch Froch in October. Those were non-refundable packages, and so they came over here anyway. So that, that will have an effect, maybe on the level of support, but certainly on the, the, the numbers overall here. But for all that, this is a hugely important fight at the end of what's been regarded as a groundbreaking tournament in the sport of boxing. And a win for Carl Froch would be by far the best win by a British boxer anywhere in the world this year and would extend this remarkable sequence that we've been talking about for so long now, the best by a British boxer in the televised era. And a quick word from you, Paulie, um, from the way that this has been been you know built up in this country we well, we you know we like we Carl Froch is maybe not somebody who was on everybody's lips a few years ago but now his fan base is growing all the time i mean how is it being perceived in the states um you know it's a little different here uh, andre ward i think if he was from any other country would probably probably be a, a crossover superstar but um the us is such a big country and um, there's so much going on that um, once you have the, the fight on the opposite coast of where Ward is from, uh, which he's from Oakland, California, the fight is in Atlantic City, New Jersey, so literally you're across the across the continent. Um, you don't get as much hype uh, for the American fighter. I mean, I, I think uh, as far as I'm concerned, Atlantic City is pretty neutral, as neutral as it comes, you know. Um, if you remember, Ricky Hatton fought uh, Louis Colazzo in Massachusetts, uh, in Boston, Massachusetts a few years ago, and he, 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 he came out with a close decision, so um, I think as far as Atlantic City is concerned, it's pretty it's pretty neutral. It's not like last week where, okay, uh, Amir Khan was actually in the hometown of Lamont Peterson. Uh, Andre Ward, um, unless you're a boxing fan, not too many people will, will know Andre Ward on the East Coast. Mm. We'll hear from uh, Carl Froch's trainer, Rob McCracken, in just one second. But, Mike, you've been speaking to Carl Froch this week. Uh, what's, what's his mood like? Well, I was very impressed with his general comportment at the press conference up in New York a couple of days ago. He's been here in the U.S. for three weeks, completing his sparring and his preparations overall. He told me he's been on the 12 stone super middleweight limit for a couple of weeks now. He's, he's a boxer who lives the life. He doesn't balloon up in between fights. And he's 34 now, but he's much fresher than many a 34-year-old boxer. This will be his seventh world title fight. He gets more and more seasoned 
with each passing fight. What's significant about those fights is all but one of them have gone the distance, and even that one went 14 seconds shy of the distance. Mm. And he told me that in the wake of the controversy surrounding Amir Khan's fight last weekend, there has to be a worry about fighting, if not in Andre Ward's hometown, then at least in his home country. You know, if, it's, if the rounds are close and it's a close fight, it's definitely going to be a concern. So, you know, that's, that's in the game plan to make sure that the rounds aren't close. I think when I went to Finland to fight Arthur Abraham, if it was going to be a close fight, if the rounds were nip and tuck, as you say, it could be an issue. But when, when it's a shutout performance, then that eliminates that. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm, I'm going there to, to shut him out. I'm, I'm going to certainly try and do that. I don't know if that's possible against the fighter of Andre Ward's calibre. But, you know, I've just got to be busy. I've got to finish the round strong. And I've got to um, apply my... Um, my strength early on in terms of my punching power and get him on his back foot and be aggressive and um, there'll be no doubt in the judges' minds then who to score it. If it's close and it's tight then obviously you'd, you'd expect the American fighter in America to maybe get the nod on a few rounds but we're, we're hoping we'll get a fair shake like Eddie's, Eddie's touched on before and I'm, I'm sure I'm sure I will but you know I'm in there to do the business and not leave it in the judges' hands I really am so hopefully if I do what I know I can do that won't be an issue. Now, in big, high-profile fights this year, David Hay and Amir Khan have been beaten. Do you have a sense of wanting to restore pride for Britain, or do you just live in a, a tunnel of selfishness that you only care about yourself? Boxing's a very selfish sport, and it's hard. It's hard to not have the mentality of a selfish man. But no, there is, there is a lot of pride for Britain going off at the minute. A lot of fighters have lost recently, and that's definitely in the back of my mind, you know. We've travelled away, a lot, of, a lot of our top fighters, and we've, we've been on the, the end of some wrong decisions. And... It's not looking good at the minute for the Brits, so it would be fantastic for me to take these belts home, do the job I know I can do, and these belts will be coming home. No what? doubt about it, and it will be, it'll be great to... Um, no, I don't think restore pride, because we do ourselves proud as fighters in Britain, but, you know, just to keep it rolling for, for us UK fans and for the, for the boxing fraternity over in Britain. What's been your impression of Andre <laughs> Ward's performances throughout the Super 6? Um, he's done what he's needed to do to win, really. You know, he's, he's not been an exciting fighter to watch. He doesn't light up the arena, and he... He's certainly not, um, he's not very colourful in terms of the way in which he fights. I find myself turning the fight off halfway through or switching off and fast-forwarding rounds when I've been watching him because it's the same old, same old without being, without being harsh. But there's no excitement there. I think that's due to a lack of punching power. He's not a big puncher. He doesn't seem to finish anybody. Um, he's touched on the fact that you know, a lot of my fights at top level have gone the distance, but I'm hurting my opponents. I'm stopping them in the tracks, and there's moments in there where you're thinking, hang on a minute, Frotch is hurting me, he's got him hurt, he's got him wobbled, he's going to stop him. You know, and sometimes just having a, a big enough punch to stop them in the tracks means you take control of the fight and make the fight exciting. And um, these fights, I've not gone in there for the finish. I've not been trying to knock anybody out. I've been listening to um, His Excellence, Rob McCracken, and um, just basically doing what I'm told. And in them fights, the knockout wasn't part of the plan. It really wasn't. I was in there to do a job, not get hit with shots, and, and, and win, win comfortably on points and display my boxing ability, and that's what I did.